hidden under the sea, the Earth's greatest mountain range. This is the seafloor mid-ocean ridge system, which encircles our planet for more than 40,000 miles. Yet this remarkable planetary feature is almost totally unseen above the ocean's surface. An exception is Iceland. where this geographic feature can be seen as it passes through that nation. Parts of this great mountain range were first discovered on the Atlantic seafloor in the 1950s. At first, it was thought to be unique to that ocean. Then, as more surveys were done, it was eventually determined that this was one continuous global feature linked to geological processes constantly changing the face of our planet. Since the 1950s, we have learned that the Earth's outer skin consists of seven or eight major crustal plates, plus several minor ones. The ever-moving plates are in a continuous state of birth and destruction along their boundaries. Plate boundaries at a mid-ocean ridge comprise a place of creation, known as a divergent plate boundary. Creation occurs in the rift valleys of the mid-ocean ridge system at a water depth of about 9,000 feet. New crust is formed there when magma is forced up through the sea floor, and the speed of spreading varies from place to place along the mid-ocean ridge system. In the mid-Atlantic, the rate is about one inch per year. While along the fast-moving Pacific rise, it can be as high as seven inches per year. The latter is about twice the rate at which a human fingernail grows. Since our planet is not increasing in size, there has to be a place where seafloor is consumed. This process is called subduction, when plates collide and one passes under another. The plate forced into the Earth's interior is melted and essentially recycled. Deep trench systems in the world ocean are all subduction regions. The enormous forces of friction between plates results in zones of extremely active volcanic and earthquake activity. An example is the island archipelago of Japan that flanks the Japan Trench. Here the Pacific Plate is being shoved under the Asian Plate. This process folds up the edge of the Asian plate to create mountainous topography of that volcanically active nation. The average time between the creation of new seafloor at a spreading center on a mid-ocean ridge and its destruction at a subduction zone in a trench is roughly 200 million years. Now, compared to the 4.6 billion year age of our planet, this is indeed a very rapid geological process. Rift valleys within the uh, mid-ocean ridges often contain fields of hydrothermal vents, which are created when water percolates down into the seafloor. These are features that were first found and investigated in 1977. Sometimes called black smokers, they are created when the seawater comes into contact with magma, becomes superheated, and starts to rise rapidly through subsurface rock structures. The water's intense heat leaches metallic compounds out of the rocks and jets out of the seabed at temperatures as high as 750 degrees Fahrenheit. These jets are called smokers and can be clear, black, or white. Since the ambient temperature of seawater at this depth is in the low 30s, the entrained minerals precipitate out very quickly. The result is the formation of areas of mineral concretion chimneys and pavements that can be of poor quality, that is, adaptable to deep sea mining. Remarkably, these hydrothermal vent fields also support an entire life system that has no relationship to photosynthetically created life on Earth. Instead of being powered by sunlight, the deep ocean alternative is fueled by thermal heat and chemical compounds from the Earth's interior. This other life process on our planet was only discovered about four decades ago. 
Over the past two decades, intensive studies of the global mid-ocean ridge system have shown that hydrothermal vent fields are found along its entire length. But these features are transient, and they have lifetimes ranging from months to years. The ore-rich pavements created by the jets have attracted the interest of mining companies. By 2012, the Canadian company Nautilus Minerals had hoped to begin uh, seafloor mining operations in the uh, territorial waters of Papua New Guinea working at a depth of 5,300 feet. However, financial and political problems resulted in the company going bankrupt in 2019, and right now there are no plans to do any sustained ocean mining in that area. However, for some time, Japan, Korea, and China have all been conducting research on the commercial possibilities of exploiting these seafloor resources. The big question is whether or not these extraction activities can profitably compete with land-based resource operations. But in the words of the Old West, it may be true that there's gold in them thar hills.